Good evening. Please stand and sing the gathering hymn. At the Lamb's high feast we sing praise to our victorious King. He has washed us in the tide, flowing from His open side. Praise we Him whose love divine Gives his sacred blood for wine, gives his body for the feast. Christ the victim, Christ the priest. Where the paschal blood is poured, death's dark angel shades his sword. Israel's hosts triumph and go through the wave that drowns the fall. Praise we Christ whose blood was shed, Paschal victim, Paschal bread, with eternity and love. Each new manna from above. Easter triumph, Easter joy, sin alone can this destroy. From sin's power do thou set free, souls newborn, O Lord, in thee. Hymns of glory, songs of praise, Father, unto thee we raise. Risen Lord, all praise to thee, with the Spirit ever be. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take 
take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen, amen. Glory to God in the highest, and and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with the Fa God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. When Moses came to the people and related all the words and ordinances of the Lord, they all answered with one voice, we will do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord and rising early the next day, he erected at the foot of the mountain an altar and twelve pillars for the twelve tribes of Israel. Then, having sent certain young men of, Is of the Israelites to offer holocausts and sacrifice young bulls as peace offerings to the Lord, Moses took half of the blood and put it in large bowls. The other half he splashed on the altar. Taking the book of the covenant, he read it aloud to the people, who answered, all that the Lord has said, we will heed and do. Then he took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words of his. The word of the Lord. salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. How shall I make a return to the Lord? for all the good he has done for me. The cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. 
precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. To you I will offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. To my, my vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came as high priest of the good things that have come to be, passing through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made by hands, that is, not belonging to this creation, he entered once for all into the sanctuary, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of a heifer's ashes can sanctify those who are defiled so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from dead works to worship the living God. For this reason, he is mediator of a new covenant, since a death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant, those who are called may receive the promise of eternal inheritance. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you, carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? 
Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, good evening and happy feast of Corpus Christi. Today's feast day, Corpus Christi, or the Solemnity of the Most Holy Body and Blood of Christ, is a feast day centered around the Eucharist, centered around our belief that Jesus is truly present in the Blessed Sacrament, that in the body and or in the wine and the bread on the altar, when the priest uh, says the words of consecration through the power that's been given to the priest by his ordination, we believe the bread and wine truly becomes bod Christ's body, blood, soul, and divinity. And this uh, feast day is dedicated to uh, praising God for that reality and sort of calling it to mind because it's good for us to recall what it is we do here when we come to church, when we come to Mass, to the altar. This uh, gospel is very appropriate because this is the basis for our belief in the Eucharist. Jesus said, this is my body. And he said, this is my blood of the new covenant. Do this in remembrance of me. There's been certain people that have tried to explain that away. Like Jesus was just, uh, you know, saying a parable or he was just talking an analogy. But we Catholics, we believe he really meant it. Because when he was talking in parables, he made it clear it was a parable. When he was using analogy, Jesus was pretty clear that it was an analogy. But he says, this is my body, this is my blood given up for you. And we take Jesus at his word that at the Last Supper, he instituted the Eucharist, that it truly is Christ's body and blood. This belief is what informs some of the things that we do, some of our practices around the Blessed Sacrament. Of course, since we believe it truly is Jesus, that's why you genuflect when you approach a tabernacle or when you approach the altar when it has the Eucharist on it. We genuflect just like you would genuflect to when you're in the presence of a king or of royalty because we believe Jesus is truly present here. That's also why we have the Eucharistic fast. As most of you probably know, maybe some of you have forgotten or were never taught, but Catholics, before we receive the Eucharist, we fast from food for an hour before we receive the Eucharist. We can drink water, we can take necessary medicine, but we don't eat anything else before we receive the Eucharist for an hour. And of course, the older folks here remember when that fast was a whole lot longer and was a lot more difficult. But we do that because we're trying to prepare ourselves. We're trying to acknowledge, I'm about to receive something very important, and I want to be prepared. I want to be ready to receive it. It's almost kind of akin to, I know for myself, if I'm going to a party where I know there's going to be really good food, or I'm going out to a restaurant that I know has really good food, sometimes, you know, you skip a meal before, or you sort of eat light so that you can fully enjoy what you're about to go and have at the party. In a way, we're doing the same thing. We're fasting because we're preparing for the most special food, the most precious food that we ever eat. And also the, the hunger that comes from a fast, though I don't know how hungry you can really get in one hour, but the hunger that comes from a fast is meant to remind our hearts and our souls, this is how we ought to yearn for Christ. We ought to have a certain spiritual hunger, a desire, a need to receive him in the Eucharist. 
Of course, that's also why as Catholics we believe that uh, to receive the Eucharist, we need to be in a state of grace. We need to uh, be free from any grave sin, any mortal sin. If we are conscious of mortal sin, we need to go to confession before we receive the Eucharist. Again, the reason is we're receiving something so great. We want to be like worthy receptacles. We want to be prepared. We want to have a, a house that's cleaned up, that's ready to receive Jesus. Another reason we need to have our, our souls clean to be free from sin, it comes from St. Paul, of course, in the scriptures. He says we have to, you know, we receive the body and blood of Christ. We condemn ourselves if we receive it unworthily. But of course, the reason is because when you approach the priest or the minister, and when he holds out the Eucharist and says, the body of Christ, the response is, Amen. That's a Hebrew word for, I believe. It's an affirmative. It's, they're asking you essentially a question. The body of Christ, essentially, do you believe it? And you say, Amen. Amen. Yes, I believe. But of course, if, we're, if we have committed grave sin, if we've turned our back on God, then we're sort of living a lie. We're saying, I kind of believe, but actually, I don't like to listen to God, or I still do my own thing, or I still am doing harm to either God or to myself or to my neighbor. That's why we can't receive the Eucharist unworthily, because there's a lack of honesty there. We can't go and say, Amen, I believe, if we ourselves are still sort of, sort of wrapped up in, in, in our sins. It doesn't mean we have to be perfect, but we have to make a good confession of any mortal sin before we receive the Eucharist. Of course, these are all sort of the negative things or some of the, the things we have to do to prepare ourselves. But we should also recall on this feast the incredible beauty of what we're receiving, the incredible gift that the Eucharist is. I think this past year has taught us that virtual things are no replacement for the real in-person thing, right? Seeing your grandkids on a Zoom call is not as good as seeing them in person. Drinking coffee while you're talking to your friend on the phone is not as good as being in the coffee shop together or around your, around your dining room table together. Baseball is much better seen in person than just on TV. Things in person are more meaningful than virtual. And there's something very real, very personal about the Eucharist. We have to come and physically receive the Eucharist. We have to take the body and blood of Jesus into our very selves. There's a physical contact there that's so incredible. Think about it. This is the, the moment in our lives that we're closest to God on this side of eternity, when Jesus has entered into our very bodies in the Eucharist. This should be a moment where we pray, where we talk to God, we thank the Lord, we pour out our hearts to him and thank him for giving himself to us, for all the graces, all the blessings that he gives to us. Also, the Eucharist has been called the bread of heaven, and it's sort of a little preview of heaven, because of course heaven is life with God, heaven is eternity united to God, and this is the closest we get to that on earth, receiving the Eucharist, having our bodies, our minds united to God in the Eucharist, is this little foreshadowing of the joy of heaven. And if we've done the work of preparing ourselves, if we've come and we pray well, if we dispose ourselves to humbly receive the Eucharist, there's an incredible joy and a peace that comes from the Eucharist, that comes from that, those moments of receiving the Lord. So my brothers and sisters today, let us thank the Lord that he's given us such a great gift in the Eucharist that Jesus gave his body and blood on the cross and then gives it to us again every time we come to Mass, every time we receive the body and the blood, the bread and wine. Let us thank the Lord for this great gift. Let us ask the Lord to help us never take it for granted. And let us ask the Lord to help us prepare ourselves so we may worthily receive this sacrament.
Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father. God lovingly provides the bread of life and cup of salvation for all who seek him. We now turn to him in prayer with our prayers for the church and for the world. That God may continue to protect our holy church and bless her efforts in spreading the good news, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That those who lead may be guided by the Holy Spirit in seeking the common good in their communities let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That brokenness and conflict within families may be healed and resolved through the gracious mercy of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That nourished by the Eucharist, this faith community may continue to grow ever closer to the heart and mind of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. That those who have died in the light of faith may enjoy the fullness of God's love at his heavenly table. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And today's Mass is offered for Edmund and Josephine Mohan. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we praise and thank you for your love and mercy. And most especially, we thank you for the gift of, this, of the Eucharist. We ask you to hear these prayers and to answer them through Christ our Lord. Shepherd of souls, refresh and bless your chosen pilgrim flock with manna in the wilderness, with water from the rock. We would not live by bread alone, but by your word of grace, in strength of which we travel. Our abiding place, good unto us in breaking bread, but do not then depart. Savior, abide with us and spread your table in our hearts. Lord, 
puts up with us in love divine. Your body and your blood, that living bread, that heavenly wine, be immortal food. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, we sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for all the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise, nourishing your faithful by his sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bound by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, over all creatures of heaven and earth, sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the hosts of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood 
of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving, saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. down from heaven. 
Eat this bread, drink this cup. Come to me and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup. Trust in me and you will not thirst. Eat my flesh and drink my blood and I will raise you up on the last day. Eat this bread, drink this cup, come to me and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup, Trust in me and you will not thirst. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. Eat this bread, drink this cup, come to me and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup, trust in me and you will not thirst. If you believe and eat this bread, you will have eternal life. Eat this bread, drink this cup, Come to me and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup. Trust in me and you will not thirst.
Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Uh, just the usual announcements, of course, please lower the kneelers wherever you are sitting, and if uh, you would be willing to help us clean the church after Mass, we would greatly appreciate your help. And then just again a reminder that uh, next week uh, is when the dispensation is lifted. So all uh, Catholics, unless they fit into certain um, you know, criteria about being elderly or vulnerable or sick themselves, uh, we are all now required to come to Sunday Mass. So again, uh, this is the last weekend under the dispensation. It's being lifted on the 11th on Friday. And so next weekend we will uh, be without the dispensation. So please, again, spread the word to maybe family or friends who do not know or, or have not heard this yet. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Beyond all praising, we worship you today and sing the love amazing that songs of carry pay. For we can only wonder at every gift you send. At last, saints without number and mercies without end. We lift our hearts before you and wait upon your word. We honor and adore you, our great and mighty 